Hey guys, Joe Kistel here, and today a few quick tips on getting started in underwater videography. Right into it, first things first, same thing with underwater photography, keep it simple, okay? You wanna stay alive when you're underwater, that's your number one priority, so focus on that. Photography, cinematography, second to that, okay? You don't want to overcomplicate things any more than they already are. And another part of that is the amount of equipment you bring with you. If you're going on a charter boat or anybody's boat, the more elaborate equipment you have, the more space is taken on a boat, the more time and prep and all that it takes, and the more of a headache it is underwater, and the more of a liability it is if somebody else in the boat breaks it, which would uh -oh. suck really bad. So, keep it simple. Two, we need a camera that can do underwater video. And holy cow, we live in an awesome time because camera technology has just freaking gone crazy in the last several years. You can get very good results with a modestly priced camera. So that is awesome. There's stuff like this where you can get kind of an off the shelf video camera, stick it in a box like this, go down there, push some buttons, get some video that way. That's kind of a cool thing to do. There's this kind of stuff, which this is not something you probably would get to start off in if you're just starting but you can do some phenomenal work with these types of cameras. And in fact, a lot of my work is done with cameras like this. But what I think is fantastic and a great starting point for beginners and even those maybe doing professional work, is something like this, okay? Now you can go get a GoPro and action cameras and you can do some cool stuff with that, but you're generally not gonna get really fantastic results with those cameras. Having said that, they serve a place, they capture the moment, and sometimes capturing the moment is the most important part. I'll provide a link to a great white encounter that we are involved in that was shot on an old, old GoPro, and it's a very popular clip because it captured a great white encounter. But if you want really kick butt images, you can do pretty damn good with these kind of things. Pretty darn good, I should say. Whatever. And all this is, that's just something I've used in the past. Canon, I think, refers to this type of camera as like a point and shoot type camera. Uh, Nikon, Sony, they all have little cameras like this as well. You can get some great video with these types of cameras and, and make sure that it has full manual control in video mode. A lot of them have full manual control picture mode, but sometimes not the video mode. And that's kind of a buzzkill when it comes to video. So look into these cameras if you want and then find a housing for it and you have yourself an underwater video camera that can do pretty well. I'm gonna do another video that will describe some of my recommendations for specific types of cameras like this to maybe consider. So if you're interested, please subscribe. Why not? <laughs> but in the meantime, to start off, just get the darn camera and something you can put it in to keep it waterproof so you can take it underwater and go with that. Next thing you wanna do is learn the camera before you get in the water. Now, video is a little different. Generally, you are gonna fix your shutter speed. So, most times, most people are gonna be filming at a 24 frames per second. So if you're gonna do that, you're gonna to wanna to shoot at a shutter speed of 1 50th. If you're gonna shoot at 30 frames per second, you're gonna wanna shoot at a shutter speed of 1 60th. That's just kind of a rule of thumb that's not stuck in stone, but that's what most cinematography video guys are gonna to try to do. And if you assume that logic and you fix that, the only other two variables you have to deal with other than focus is your ISO and your aperture. And that's kind of cool. So now when you go down underwater, those are the two variables you can play with to get your image how you want it to look. And I'll explain those settings in more detail in a future video, but basically your aperture and your ISO are both gonna affect, well the aperture is gonna affect the amount of light coming into the camera, at the same time affecting your focal plane as well your depth of field, I should say, as well, whereas the ISO will affect your overall exposure. One thing that's kind of nice about these cameras, they kind of generally have a, a smaller image sensor and a, a wider angle lens. That kind of helps with depth of field. You generally get a larger depth of field, a little more forgiving play on the focus, if you will, with those types of cameras. So you can generally leave the aperture kind of low and still get a pretty good depth of field. But if you are a little nervous, you can creep that aperture up a little bit to make a smaller circle. What that will do is make sure 
your subjects are a better chance of being in focus because it gives you a larger focal distance or basically makes a bigger area where things are in focus. The compromise to that though is the amount of light that's coming in and depending on your underwater environment that could be a compromise and you can cheat with your ISO. So those are the two main settings you'll kind of have to learn and massage out with the camera you get. And at this point you want to shoot natural light. A lot of these cameras you can calibrate white balance to some extent, you can get filters, but just go down and shoot, manipulate your aperture, your ISO to get started. Do that for a while, get very comfortable with the camera underwater before you even think about adding these monstrosity lights and all that stuff because yeah, you may be able to get some cool images with that when you're ready to do it, but it's gonna just up your effort, your investment, and limit your amount of time on things you can do down there because it's other stuff to mess with. I hope that was helpful and I wasn't too scattered brain, but to recap, keep it simple, stay safe, get a camera that can shoot underwater, learn the camera on the surface before you go down, just fix your frame rate and your shutter speed, go down and adjust your ISO, your aperture and focus, I'll go into all those in more details in a future video, so please subscribe, and I think that's it. Thanks.